Hello ladies and gentlemen, Captain Shack here with TGN and welcome to Underground, our series spotlighting those titles that might not have jumped up on your radar just yet. Today we're looking at one hell of a sandbox called Life is Futile. The devs over at Bitbox Limited are aiming insanely high with this title, describing it as a realistic medieval multiplayer sandbox with Get this, this is the feature list now, terraforming, free preset and modular building for constructing houses that range from small huts to massive castles, a deep detailed crafting system, survival that fits in with the best of the open world survival games that are out on offer right now, and a real time, no auto tab targeting combat that's built on a physics system. It's physics driven combat. And on top of all that, an original formation system to help you command large numbers of troops and quite a few other features. So let's get in. Now I've played this for quite a few hours so far and I can tell you it's a really intriguing design. The game world offered in the early alpha, and the alpha just came out now, is massive. It's a large island with a single mountain peak off in the distance. The one you can see here on the map is the same one you see way off in the distance, just to give you an idea how big the map actually is. It's really hard not to boot up this game and imagine building a house or a castle on some rugged piece of land off in the distance. Now, let me be clear on one point. Life is Futile is actually going to be two separate games. The current alpha is called Life is Futile Your Own, which has a focus on a smaller player base that allows players to host their very own servers. That's what I'm playing on right now as a private server. You can have up to 64 players in a server if you've got the PC to handle it, or you hire an actual server farm to run it for you, which are already available. I haven't tested that yet. On the other hand, Life is Futile MMO, as the name suggests, is going to be a full-on MMO with a player base that ranges into the thousands. Me, I'm more excited about the personal servers that gives me the freedom to customize the experience to my liking. I can change skill gain rates, skill caps, and have it fit a smaller player base. I really like that. I'm hoping they add mod support so we can actually customize the servers even more. So I actually didn't mention that part. It's an RPG. Now think Ultima Online if you're old enough to remember that classic MMO, or maybe even Oblivion. As you do different tasks around the world, you'll gain points in those different skills associated with those tasks. So if you're going swimming, you're gonna be better at swimming because you'll gain points in that skill. If you do more blacksmithing or architecture, or whatever skill you wanna name it, there's a ton of skills, you'll get better as you do them. The skill list ranges from things like animal taming to a variety of combat skills. There's a ton in here. Speaking of combat skills, the physics driven combat is what it's called. Now they got an ex exhaustive explanation on the website, but the basics are this. They're taking into account the speed of the weapon moving, the speed of the target, where you strike and how, add in the fact that every body part can have individual wounds, and they've got a system called the double health system, and you've got one of the most in-depth health systems I've ever seen. Now the flashiest aspect of this game is the world crafting elements. After a few hours of tooling around on a live stream with the community, we managed to make some basic tools, gain a bunch of skill points, flatten out some land, cut down some trees, go fishing, start a fire, saw some logs into boards, and eventually, eventually build my very first tiny little hut. Now, each task takes a considerable amount of time and effort, giving you that instant feeling when you're playing that you'd wish you had more friends online helping you build this stuff. It's easy to see how big projects are going to require small communities working together in order to accomplish, well, pretty much anything large. I can't wait to get a bunch of people online with the goal of building a village or even a castle. And this is where things get really exciting. You see, everything you're watching right now in this dev trailer was made by players in the game. Big communities could come together, divide up jobs, and work together to create something epic. Now think about the possibilities for a second. Playing the role of the town miner, digging deep tunnels into the mountainside looking for iron, or playing the role of the blacksmiths, forging swords and tools for your town's guard or your militia. Now, add in another group of players doing the same thing on the same server. Add in a bit of shit talking and some open world PvP and a full on loot system and bam, you've got yourself a full on siege war with archers and just everything going crazy. Really, it starts to look more like medieval total war than a third person, first person RPG. Now, I've 
tried out the alpha and I've tried the combat and it feels really wonky. Maybe it's my lack of experience with this system, but it really feels like it needs more work. The animations aren't fantastic, and if you look close up, some of the textures look pretty dated, but for an early access title that just opened up on Steam, I have to say the concept and even the basic crafting elements already have me hella excited for this title. Or maybe I just want to lead a cavalry charge and build a fucking castle. I don't know, but it looks like fun. All right, guys, I'm interested in what you think about all the early access titles that are coming out to Steam, and how does the game look like for you? Like, you're watching the trailer now, what do you think? Is the slow pace too much for you? Or do you think sandbox games need to like tone it back and actually take some time in building this stuff because that's the focus of the game? I'm curious to know what you guys think. All right, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel for more gaming goodness, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.